Now, the main, oh, the main thing that seems to be cropping up on a lot of people's minds is that my large deficit, so 40%, 1900 calories, is going to potentially result in one, muscle loss. Number two, is that somehow my metabolism is going to adapt to the, these really low calories. So that thing you might know as is starvation mode. I don't have a spoon, so I have to lick it to eat it. But um, number three, oh, I've forgotten what number three was. Starvation mode, muscle loss, starvation mode. Ah, blood glucose. So most people think that when they uh, don't eat and they're really, really hungry, it means their blood glucose is really, really, really low. So they need to eat or they're gonna faint and die and pass out or whatever kind of thing that you think is probably wrong. I made a terrible mistake of getting a Granny Smith apple. But they didn't have any Pink Ladies, so I had to get something and I didn't want to spend £2.50 on melon. But these are all, they're all valid concerns and I genuinely thought that A, a diet had to be sustainable. You know, why follow a diet? if it's not going to be sustainable, you're not going to last forever. You know, I thought that blood glucose would drop and that I, that's the result of me being hungry and I need to eat to be able to stop me fainting and passing out. I also thought that extreme deficits would probably cause muscle loss. But I can answer all of those and with at least some sort of evidence as well behind them so that we're not just sort of flying in the dark and using opinion as evidence, which isn't very good. Well, uh, welcome to a, a little kind of uh, small segment within the overall vlog. Um, I wanted to go over my training um, so far because obviously that's a quite a poignant part and inclusion part of the vlog in terms of how things are going. So low calories, 1900 at the moment, um, where you'd think some sort of training performances would drop and, and things would get worse or whatever else, but maybe I'll do a full vlog about this one. But Effectively, it's not been hindered. I mean, this is a 155 kilo back squat, three sets of six. I'm coming back from uh, training. I took a whole week off at Christmas, then I did a, a small intro week. And I'm coming back into training, adding a little bit more each and every week. And this is sort of first week of a higher aspect of volume and frequency. Um, squat felt good, felt kind of superhuman to a certain extent. I wasn't bracing quite as hard as I wanted to. You can see I'm tucking a little bit at the bottom, which is really annoying. I, my ankle flexion isn't amazing, and this is kind of why I use these these shoes themselves. But squats were good. 155, three sets of six, uh, and certainly going to up those probably to 160 in the following week. Um, this was a 190 deadlift for three repetitions. Uh, again, really smooth, really easy, just adding more sets and uh, and a little bit more weight on to the previous week or my intro week, which was last week. Um, and it felt good, you know, nice and smooth. I'm really enjoying sort of deadlifts. I'm trying to work a lot on my leg drive uh, rather than just necessarily backing the bar up, which a lot of people do. So you can see I'm sort of pushing really hard down through my feet um, to make sure that I'm pushing with my legs rather than necessarily just pulling with my arms. But yeah, 190 for three sets of three, it felt good. And then we get on to sort of our accessory work. Good old walking lunges, everybody loves those. Uh, walking on a train track and not a tightrope, like I sort of described before, but everyone should do unilateral exercises as part of their training. And then uh, the camera decided to focus on the nice little uh, weight stack that's on the left-hand side. Um, I also won't tell you what James was saying in the background that I was laughing about, but hip thrusts included. Um, we don't necessarily have an isolation uh, hamstring curl exercise here. Um, so what I tend to do is in the following uh, lower body session, I'll tend to include some sort of uh, hamstring work with a prone hamstring curl of sorts. So um, that's kind of where I work around that a little bit. Um, but these are really good. Um, I don't, haven't included them in previous programs, but again, tuck that chin in, drive from the heels as hard as you can, and try and drive up through the glutes, holding sort of a little penny in between your cheeks. But yeah, the camera wasn't in the best position here, but you know, it is what it is. And then finished off with some uh, calf raises. So this is this nice machine, feels good, and I, everyone could do with a little bit more calves, but that was kind of... Uh, my session, feeling good, ready to go into 
the next part of the video. Now, the, the big deficit, the 40% deficit and the potential loss of muscle mass. Um, there is a paper um, in 2016 that was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition that took uh, two groups of 20 men, relatively untrained, so we can take what we will from that. One was put into a low protein group and one was put in a high protein group of about 2.4 grams per kilogram. They weight trained and they did this over four weeks and they were in a 40% caloric deficit. So to take that into consideration, normally when I diet personally, I put myself in like 10% or my clients in about 10, 15%, maybe 20 maximum. And they lost no muscle mass and actually gained a little bit. Now, when it comes to starvation mode, this is essentially something called adaptive thermogenesis. Now, it's basically where your BMR, so the basal metabolic rate, the amount of calories that you will just burn lying down doing absolutely nothing every day, will be adjusted based on the fact that you're uh, dieting or you have no calories but you're not eating many calories. Now, that has been seen in, in some studies up to about 20%, in one case study in a bodybuilder, um, 40%. So it's, you know, it's relevant, it's out there. However, these were in studies where extreme situations took place. The biggest loser one where they saw 20% adaption was individuals who were exercising an absolute shit ton and eating nothing. Same thing for a, a natural bodybuilder. He was dieting to extreme body fat levels. I am in a 40% deficit eating sufficient protein and not training like a madman. So the adaption is probably unlikely. And the last one for um, blood glucose, that's quite important. If I was a diabetic or if I had something wrong with my pancreas or if I had something wrong with my blood glucose management, that's a clinical issue. Like I actually go to the doctor. So I will at some point try and find a means to be able to test my blood glucose, certainly when I haven't eaten for most of the day. And I will show you that it's still well controlled because I'm young, I'm healthy, I'm fit. I have no preconditions that are going to cause me any issue in terms of my blood glucose. So the matter of fact is I'm just hungry and it's probably based off the fact that I'm eating low calories and it's in my head. That's it really. Right, well, um, I, uh, my, my big goal for this year was to, uh, to don't search for perfect and just get it done. Uh, or basically done is better than perfect. And this is this is my done. Like I don't have my setup. It's not all fancy. I've got my camera on. I've rigged up my mic and we're just here. We're getting it done. I'm about to tuck into dinner, which is, um, this in fact is really good. So if you haven't been following me on Instagram, I've been tracking all my sort of basically vlogging daily, but on Instagram and uh, using this platform as more of a long format stuff to kind of like argue it out, if you will. Um, but I find this an Aldi. Um, half a kilo of food, 550 grams of food, 250 calories. It is only 11 grams of protein, so I've topped it up with a couple of light baby bells and uh, Aldi skier yogurt, which is 16 grams of protein and an extra 10 from five of each of these. Diet Coke for a bit of sweetness. And then before I go to bed to top things up, I'll have a, a protein shake. Um, and that's kind of me, really. That's my day, 1900 calories and about 180 to 190 grams of protein. Um, now, the pitfalls that I kind of discussed about, or certainly the criticisms that I've, that I've discussed, and there are still people, I think I posted a picture of my uh, five days and four kilo loss, and there are still people kind of losing their, uh, their turkey twizzlers over it, how it's not sustainable, you can't keep this up. And you're totally right. I, I don't want to keep this up. I mean, I understand that, um, uh, crash diets are terrible, but this isn't a crash diet. This is uh, kind of crash calories. I I'm not elim eliminating any kind of food group, so I'm not cutting carbs to keto levels. I'm not doing anything that's necessarily different to what I'd probably do before. Um, you know, the habits are still remaining the same. I like vegetables. I have lots of vegetables. I have a high protein diet. I'm having very different types of carbohydrates. I probably have pulled back a lot on, say, processed food, but I don't typically eat a lot of that anyway. Um, that's kind of it. You know, the only difference is my calorie intake. The type of food I'm consuming is varied and vastly varied, in fact, in terms of my normal intake. So, you know, whether or not this is sustainable is really down to the amount of calories that I'm consuming, not whether or not uh, my habits are. 
I also have a plan. You know, I'm doing this for four weeks. That's, that, that's the length of time I'm doing, no longer, absolutely no longer. Four weeks, I've committed to that. And then when I'm sitting there kind of pondering myself on Saturday when I was hungry, I thought to myself, I'm doing this to myself. No one's telling me to do it. I'm not, I, I'm not forcing, no one's forcing me to do this. I can stop if I want to. But I have a clear objective and a goal of what I want to do. And in reality, I'm not suffering. I'm hungry, but I'm not suffering. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of answered some criticisms. Uh, I'm gonna have to see how this, this sweet potato curry is like. It looks pretty good, actually, um, overall. And I've kind of got a mix of food, but yeah. I've, I've been having some backlash on this whole thing about being sustainable and, and, and bollocks. But, you know, if you have questions or queries or comments about any of this, then, you know, these vlogs are about interaction and I want to know what you think and how you think. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, please do. I'm trying to track as much of things as I can. I also am on uh, my fitness pal as well, Body Prep. Check me out in there and you can follow me everything. But anyway, I, I promised I also wouldn't ramble in the new year, so I'm not going to. I hope you've had a wonderful weekend. I hope you're having a wonderful start of the week. And uh, we'll catch you in our next episode, which will be on Thursday at 5.30. We might even have a bonus episode uh, coming up. I'm about to go to Bath on Thursday and Friday, so we'll see. But either way, um, keep doing what you're doing. Keep asking questions. And I'm going to be here hungry, salivating. I'm actually salivating. Right, I'm, I'm thinking. Anyway, uh, episode two of the cutting season is done.